All right, before I get started on this video, if you like the content of, you know, building your own stuff, uh, machining, all that stuff, go ahead and subscribe because I will try to put out this kind of content, you know, more regularly. So, on to the video. So what you're looking at here is a mini tool changer or a mini turret. This unit is actually in eight position. These holes here are for like short boring bars. And then of course you have your slots for your tools. Actually, let me grab a tool real quick. This is actually a tool that came with the machine or with the uh, turret itself. They fit in there like so. And unfortunately this is rotated for either this, well, probably this one to be in position. Um, unfortunately it's not rotated in the right position and this is a ratchet system. So there's a ratchet mechanism that keeps it from reversing. So it's a one-way tool system. So you can see right there, this is the coupling. If I can get that out, I don't think I can get it out. Anyways, it rides on this little brazed on piece of steel and works out the um, inconsistencies, the inaccuracies in positioning the motor just to keep the motor bearings from dying. Um, this is the original motor that came with it. It is actually a brushless uh, DC servo motor. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to communicate to this one. Uh, it almost feels like a stepper motor. If I twist it, I can feel what feels like steps. Uh, unfortunately, those aren't steps. They're actually, I have no idea what that is. It's just kind of unusual. It's an inconsistency. to be a single phase uh, encoder in here. And uh, all my equipment is set up for three phase or three channel encoders. So I can't really use that with the, the setup or with the way that I have the, the mill set up. Originally, I was going to use this a fourth axis. I'm going to use it on the lathe. So I'm going to jump over there and uh, show you it on the lathe and show you that I have to have some kind of a mounting solution for this. So, so here you can kind of see what I'm trying to do. I have to get it right there. Bring it over. And there is no good way of doing this, unfortunately. Uh, luckily, these are the style of uh, tool turrets where you just put shims underneath of it to, to help with the inaccuracy. But that's a good maybe half inch. Let me grab my calibers. All right. No good way of really doing this. You're just more or less eyeballing this whole thing. I'd rather be under than over because I can just up maybe right there yeah right about half an inch it's not the best way to do this kind of a measurement but it's the only way I really have that's actually pretty easy I've got some uh, five eighths material I can machine actually let me grab that right now yeah, this will be easier than I thought. This is hot rolled material, so none of the sides, these sides are definitely not square, so I'm gonna have to square the edges before I do anything. Anyways, I set that on there. We're definitely above, definitely above. Oh, maybe 100 thousandths of an inch, which is kind of in the ballpark of where I thought we would be. Anyways, I'm gonna have to Fire up the mill and just work with this uh, raw stock and bring it down to size and dimension. So, all right. All right, so real quick, this setup, round stock to square it up. Um, then two, one, two, three blocks behind it uh, to give it more rigidity up top. That way I can square up these ends, flip it, uh, deburr flip it, square up the other ends. It'd be safe with a nice parallel part. Um, I don't like how tall this is. The, I wish the vice jaws were a bit taller. That way it'd give it better rigidity. Anyways, um, actually, you know what? I got a thought. I got an idea real quick. All right, so all I did is just go, you know, 
we ain't got a C-clamp. You'd be surprised how usable a C-clamp is in a machine shop. You know, with vices and chucks, I think they'd be, they'd be all set and have no need for you know, such an old piece of equipment. You know, I think this is an old woodworking C-clamp. It needs a, uh, needs all uh, boiled so it just black oxide this whole thing. All right, so there it is. You know, if I, let's see if I can do this without making too much of a mess of the camera work. That is not too far off. I can shim that quite easily and get it in a spot. It should be. It's not that much play in this. I don't want to make a habit of this, but if I had to, I'd just mill like the top of this flat, that way I can get more shims underneath, get it into position, you know, get it where I want to. Don't want to make a habit of that. Next thing I do for this is to uh, mill a slot for the key and uh, make a key for this so this thing will slot in and then drill and tap. Uh, I would have to find the bolts for this and I'm not sure where they went. It's been a while since I've seen them. So, but anyways, that's uh, that's all I got for this video. So thanks for watching.